So this exhibition that uh, I curated um, is part of a series of exhibition that we organize at the CCA where we um, couple uh, different practices and in this case is the Japanese office of Go Azegawa and the Belgian um, office uh, office of uh, Karsten Gaze and Neville van Severen. And the idea is to um, put together two architects in a dialogue and somehow um, through that create a, an exhibition that shows their approach. Somehow we call this series a manifesto, so that becomes a kind of like manifesto or a position that they have towards uh, contemporary uh, debate in, in, in architecture. In this case, we um, propose them to have this kind of conversation between them, but also in the presence of the topic of history. And um, the exhibition started really as a, as a, as a, as a conversation uh, of them between their work in history and also with, with the CCA and actually the history of, of the institution and therefore the collection that, that we have here. And the exhibition in that sense reflects very much this idea of a conversation uh, because somehow it's not separated, it's not like one plus one, like exhibition of one practice and the other one is, is very much a collective work where uh, the topics that are in the different galleries are uh, coming, um, are becoming evident to the visitors and are topics that are very much defining the, the work that the architects are, uh, are designing and producing every day. So the um, different elements that they care of, like which are the, the key aspect of architecture, so you can say the elements, how architecture is put together, the kind of character that architecture has, the idea that their architecture is is contemporary, but somehow rely on the fact that there is an history of architecture where their work has to inscribe or continuously um, refer to, uh, is very much uh, present here. And is also the reason why uh, they were very much interested in looking in our collection and selecting some of the objects that are in display. So they go from you know, a plan of a Palladio Rotonda to a perspective of Madeleine Riesendorp or detailed uh, drawing of uh, Mies for the IET Pavilion in Chicago. And somehow the, the, the specific selection of these objects reflect their uh, interest in how uh, architecture is designed, is told is built and and um, and very much part of, of, of their preoccupation and uh, the, the important things is also that these exhibition are always a are a really a, a project as will be a project of architecture so therefore the architects they always have to commit to this and and design uh, new um, new items that are shown that will also become part of the CCA collection. So for the CCA, this is a way of um, bringing architects to be a, a kind of contemporary voice inside a debate that we, we as an institution, we establish with the public, but they also, whatever they, they develop in the exhibition that then also become part of the, of the CCA collection for uh, animating and populating the collection also with contemporary voices. We can say that this exhibition is a, is a manifesto of the current generation, and that is also why we also choose this topic of history. Uh, we feel that this, there is an interesting new position of the uh, contemporary, this generation of, of architects, of uh, returning to look at past architecture, but with a very different approach that was uh, from, let's say, postmodern or the previous generation. And uh, through the lens of, of this topic history, they, they also clearly explain their, their position towards um, what means uh, architecture to them. And so the fact that uh, you, you have a, 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 in the entire exhibition, the tools, the traditional tools of architecture, like model, one-to-one -one mocap, a plan, a scale, a, a, a section, and perspective, for example, are all explored as as tool for um, drawing, thinking, and representing architecture. Uh, 
but they also define which is the, the scope of their work. So the way they will do a perspective or the way they are interested in a plan or the way they are interested in a section is a very specific way to use these tools. And it's also the way they looked into the collection. Uh, therefore, they might be interested in not in a, not in a building, uh, the total building, but maybe of the plan of that building. They might be interested in a, in a section, not the entire building, but maybe the way the section reveals uh, how things are, are put together. And so somehow it gives also the um, idea of like how they generate ideas using also past architecture. I would like to start saying that uh, in the recent year I had the chance of uh, collaborating both with the office in the, um, taking some photographs of uh, their projects and um, more recently with Go Zagawa for a specific project that is the um, Cappella in Guastalla and uh, it's one of his uh, first Italian projects. So that uh, after um, considering this I had this uh, invitation from uh, Giovanna Borazzi and CCA to take part of this project and organizing a room which uh, would have been a room about photography and architecture. So um, the thing started uh, with a trip to Japan, which was intended to be documenting and seeing the some of the architecture by Go Azagawa, which are present uh, in, the, in, the, in the room. And then immediately the question of uh, dealing with the collection arose and to organize a, I don't know, a dialogue with both photographers and uh, architects and authors and uh, the collection. So I think that uh, with a very big collection of CCA, which has a mm, great focus on photography, so I'm talking about the photographic collection, this is one of the maybe infinite uh, possibilities to organize um, a room. So going deeply or more specifically in what is in the room, so there are photographs, for example, from, uh, there is an album from Felice Beato, which was this uh, Italian photographer traveling end of the uh, last century. This, room, this um, album is dated 1875, and it shows in a way an European eye on, uh, on Japan. So it uh, depicts architecture, but also a domestic um, interior. So um, the same was uh, to think about uh, Takashi Homa, which is part of the collection, but in this specific case, it's a, it's a loan, and, uh, which comes from the book and the work and the project that is named Tokyo and My Daughter. So again, it's a, in a way um, an attempt to update uh, this Felice Beato attitude towards uh, domestic landscape and interior views of uh, Japanese houses. So anyway, all the, all the project and all the organization of the sequence is both dealing with um, houses with architecture and a lot with the collaboration with the, uh, between um, photographers and architects. And so a very important place which is the two corners of the, of the room is for four photographs of Bas Prinsen that uh, uh, we know has a very extensive and long-term collaboration with office and, um, and the sequence I would say is not uh, based on any chronological order, not at all, is a room that uh, has a circular order and things are uh, one beside the other for a matter of uh, form, of color, and uh, through photographic, I would say, photographic um, character. So I was saying that this is one of the infinite possibilities to arrange uh, photographs. I think the sequence is also to deal with uh, occurrences. So events, which is the same that happens with photography. So photography is documenting, it's showing building, it's showing uh, objects, but it's also related to this uh, aspect of uh, meeting things, of encounters. Talking about contents, or what it, it is shown, there is of course um, <coughs> a presence of uh, some documentation and some projects from uh, of course, uh, sorry, not, not uh, more specifically about the Villa Shore, that is the building which is uh, reproduced in the, in the exhibition. There is the Kyoto House, that is the facade, 
There is some other small <coughs> interventions that are, for example, Richard Pear, that is British photographer. In this case, it is um, some work he did on the house of Shinohara in Yokohama. There is, uh, as I was mentioning before, Bas Prinsen, which is in this case not showing uh, extensively the office uh, projects except the DAR. And uh, it is showing a <coughs> James Sterling project, a detail of uh, Bramante in, uh, in Firenze, and uh, a detail of um, an uh, Arazzo from Bramantino. So the sequence uh, <coughs> basically goes on through references to Palladio. And, um, and to Aldo Rossi. Aldo Rossi was another um, idea to, to underline this transmigration of ideas and uh, transmigration of thoughts between uh, Japan, Europe, and, uh, and, and we say also the States. I think there is a strong presence of uh, a photograph from uh, a villa, that is, that is Villa Kuner from other floors, which I think has a formal, and um, very compositional uh, relation to the Villa Shore of uh, office. So they are uh, one beside the other. And there is, uh, I think, uh, yeah, this other flow's presence is, um, is a way to evoke also all what other flow's was writing and thinking about architecture. So it's not the specificity of this literal, being literal to the project, but also being um, open to all the contents that Alvin Floss would uh, introduce to this sequence. This gallery too is uh, located in uh, the center of uh, every seven galleries. It means, the, I think, uh, the entrance hall of this exhibition. And uh, that's why it's really important to express the sense of collaboration between office and uh, my office. So the, the, the concept of this exhibition is a kind of a mix of the scale and the mix of the project. So I think it's really interesting to see, also for me to see the uh, office project is, uh, is made by super precise uh, scale of the model. It's totally different from uh, them. Also, um, I think it's really interesting also for visitors to see um, this uh, subtle difference uh, of uh, two architects uh, with uh, the same technique, the same scale, one to 100, same material almost, but uh, maybe in walking around, uh, they start to understand what is the similarity and what is the difference. And uh, relatively, I'm more interested in the architectural elements, like uh, penalties or window or roof or whatever. And uh, I think uh, I would say the office is more something like uh, a room or more space rather than element itself. Um, from these uh, 12 models, I think it's uh, obvious to notice it. My office made the 12 project, and uh, six from uh, my office, two from office. And the uh, uh, important thing is to emphasize the aspect of a prototype in each project. For example, like uh, in Villa uh, in Buchenhout, we emphasize the uh, uh, aspect of a perimeter instead of the volume above. Or in this case, uh, of course, the repetition of the column was very important, so we emphasized that aspect. Or in the forest, uh, we make the upper floor with volume, but the, the detail and the proportion of the element in the purity is uh, really precise. So this I can notice the, what is the uh, um, the topic in each project uh, easily with uh, Japanese precision. For us, uh, it's, uh, we didn't like we did we didn't want to make an exhibition with only with uh, information or explanation of our project, and we really 
want visitor to experience uh, our project, let's say. So for me and for David and Kias, then it's really important to make uh, this one-to-one -one experience from uh, each. And uh, this is for the uh, exhibition for experience, right? That's why we made it. And uh, also for me, why experience is important because uh, for me, the architecture is a scale or proportion. So it's a bit difficult for general people to understand from a model or uh, drawings. The so one-to-one -one installation is uh, very easy to understand the, what I'm doing, the, how much height, the thickness, or materiality, how much it reflects, or uh, gravity, sense of gravity. This kind of uh, total experience is really, really important in my project. And that's why I, yeah, it, it could be another project, but uh, among uh, my houses, I picked up this uh, uh, Kyodo house because uh, it has, uh, I have to say, extremely low ceiling height on the ground floor. It has a 1.8, almost the same height with me. Uh, for Canada people, it's an amazing experience. But, uh, you know, the, each country, each culture has a different sense of scale in each house. And uh, when I um, travel around in the world, all the time i impressed the, the scale is really uh, fundamental in each culture. So I want to um, um, explain I, I want to express this sense of Japanese, Japanese intimacy, uh, economy of space, and so on. And the second thing important for me is, yeah, the name of this exhibition room is Apparent Banality. And uh, this is uh, another important topic in my practice. Uh, this Kyoto house has uh, uh, two stories, timber structure, roof shape house. I think uh, it's, um, as a contemporary Japanese architect, it's a bit special to do this kind of banal typology. The, for me, it's really important to have a connection with a sort of a banality in a city. In case of this, the typology in Tokyo. In Tokyo, uh, you can see uh, a large amount of uh, private house, which is a timber two-story roof-shaped house. So I started from this banal typology, but uh, what I did is, as I already explained, the changing the proportion and the uh, scale of the element, like uh, ceiling height, thickness of the roof, and the uh, materiality, and so on. So this uh, combination of uh, uh, scale and uh, banality is really a fundamental point in my practice. My practice, uh, sectional drawing, is, is maybe the most important drawing. And uh, maybe because sectional drawing has a the scale, we, we can um, arrange the scale of the space, proportion of the space. At the same time, the section is a, a kind of struggling with the gravity. So, uh, which kind of material and how high the pitch of the beam, this kind of uh, uh, detail in the section is uh, really, really important to make a nice experience of the space. So we actually I developed uh, my project with uh, sectional detail all the time. And in this room, uh, we draw, my office draw the eight project in total. Also, we tried to enjoy the uh, kind of um, compensation, including the reference in CCA. For example, uh, I picked up the section of the uh, uh, chapel by Arthrund, which has a huge roof on the top. And uh, he made a beautiful, beautiful dome under the big roof. I really like uh, this kind of uh, 
gap between two elements because uh, I'll say this is a sort of unconscious of architecture and I really interested in this kind of uh, um, hidden space, unconscious space of uh, the unconscious space every building shared. So for example, the house in Komazawa and the house in the forest, I, for me, it's, uh, uh, what I design is an attic space of uh, each house. In case of uh, house in the forest, I made a huge, uh, huge attic space which, which would work for the deep window or like a sandal above the living room. In case of uh, Komazawa, it looks like an uh, attic space, but at the same time, it would work for the buffer zone between the uh, ground floor and uh, the sky. So proportion and uh, arrangement of the element uh, is really uh, always important to check with uh, sectional drawing in my project. This room um, has six perspectives. For, for our office, the perspective has been, in a way, extremely important. And we call it perspective even though that, in a way, it's made on the computer. Uh, it's, in a way, made by hand on the computer, so it is quite ambiguous. But it's, it's composed, like you would compose a perspective. It's not the result of a, of a rendering program. And of course, it has, I guess, a couple of obvious references, which were also important for us. But it has always been for us also something like, uh, you could say, economy of means. Like, how can you uh, make the most clear uh, depiction of an architectural project, of an idea, um, with very simple um, tools? Yeah, it's, it's important to, we also call them collages. And of course, they, in that sense, refer to older examples when things were really still glued on, on paper, but we make them similarly on the on the computer, but the, the actual constraint, let's say, of putting layers on top of each other and composing an image uh, together like this, it, it, the constraint of choosing also one uh, perspective is, is very important in, in our work, but also in, in architecture uh, and even architectural history. And uh, for that reason, we chose from the archive uh, work of uh, Superstudio, um, Madeleine Friesendorp. Uh, they have a, a, an attitude in the creation of this image that uh, has a similar, um, let's say, um, dream in it, uh, in this creating of images. So you are not at all making thing, a representation of the reality, but you rather create a dream image, which then suddenly becomes maybe one day reality. Perhaps the idea of these perspectives is that um, in this frame you bring in elements which one after the other uh, become crucial in, in a way, the way we understand uh, the spatial quality of a project. So also here in this room we made three perspectives of a project uh, of, of Go, it's Pilotis in the forest. Um, and another three perspectives of a project of ourselves, uh, Dar in Bahrain. Um, we already had perspectives of our own project, but we decided to make new ones uh, to, to kind of uh, seek for, you could say, a parallel between uh, the spatial constellation of these two projects. Of course, it, it did not happen overnight. We first looked at each other's work. We tried to understand uh, what we share and what is different in a way in our work. Um, and we felt in the end that, in a way, in highly different contexts, the Pilotis in the forest is in a way in a very beautiful uh, natural reserve, natural park, where there's only a couple of, uh, say, holiday houses. This very high building on nine meter high columns uh, creates a room um, under, in a way, the volume of the house, uh, not unlike, in a way, the room, the space in the, the measureless of our Dar building, which is, in a way, a very public space, a very small public pocket, a shared pocket, uh, where these uh, traditional music players could interact uh, with the city or with the village. And so 
I guess, and that's also per perhaps the power of these perspectives, it is in making all these parallels that you forget, at least for a moment, like David was saying, uh, you forget for a moment the actual reality, because of course the contexts are fundamentally different. Um, and we also very much believe that, that that's the power of, of the, the architectural type to a certain extent, that in a way you, you can make these connections and you can also, I guess, we also develop the projects that way. So all of a sudden there's this special idea, a room stacked on top of a room on top of a room, um, which, which can become many different things, many different projects. Yeah, and, and just for this uh, exhibition we, we actually we uh, used the technique of uh, printing these uh, collages on big curtains. Uh, we already used it in the Chicago Biennial uh, for in a collaboration with Bas Prinzen. Uh, and um, for us it's also a, a kind of new way of testing our own images in, let's say, showing architectural uh, collages in, in a museum context. So, Coming back to this idea of, of relative abstraction, of course here these curtains are enormous and they play with the speciality of the sequence of rooms in, in, the, in, in the CCA. At the same time, uh, we feel their sense of abstraction here very clearly depicted in these almost uh, very rough uh, textures. Um, apart from uh, the two, the two uh, references which David talked about from the collection of the CCA, uh, we thought we'd bring in another two, which is on the one hand this very delicate uh, drawing of, of Aldo Rossi, somehow a, a spatial depiction in relationship to his uh, analogous city, and on the other hand this kind of object drawing of a piece of furniture of, uh, of a Torre Sotsas uh, from the collection, actually a piece of furniture which belongs to the CCA, but where the moment you look at the drawing itself, you start to forget what it really is. I mean, is it furniture? Is it a totem? Is it a building? Um, and that's been very much, uh, we believe, the power of, of exactly uh, Sotsas uh, uh, drawings, uh, that uh, in his, in a way, search for, I mean, new, uh, I would say, objects to mediate our contemporary life. Um, scale starts to play a big role, but scale seems to be the decision at the end of the process. And again, to bring it back to, to this set, uh, both projects uh, of, of Ko Hasegawa and ourselves are relatively small buildings, but for example the, the Dar in Bahrain, it exists in two sizes, you could say. I mean, there's two buildings, um, quite different, simply because the scale is different. But in a way, the depiction you see here in the back, you could say could almost represent both buildings. So again, it is almost trying to suspend certain amount of decisions in the architectural process, which we believe um, is deeply connected with this, as, as David kind of said, this, this parallel world. So the perspective as one of these, I would say, pockets of design, like the plan or as the section or as the one-to-one -one materialization. In each of these, you kind of make a set of decisions, which then in the end, uh, you can bring together and becomes the architectural project. Yeah, and, and what is also important to say is that uh, in this collaboration with Go Hasegawa and, and our office, uh, of course, we, we decided to uh, take on the challenge, let's say, to, to make a collage of uh, project of Go. And, and we deliberately wanted to do this. So this uh, exhibition is really about uh, how to work together with an office in Tokyo. and. Um, and, and, and in a way it also asks question about authorship, uh, which is in a, way a very important question, but, but we like to, let's say, uh, blur these boundaries in, in this room, for instance, because of course the house Pilotis in the forest is built, but uh, how could you in a way appropriate it, in our case, back into a collage. Eh? And this is something we then again did for ourselves with the Dar building, because there are existing collages, but as Kerstin mentioned, it is also important to again make them specifically for this uh, exhibition. In this room we, we, we show plans. Um, of course, the way you show plans has a big impact on how you read plans. For us, plans are very, I would say, simple figures. And very often you could say they are rooms, uh, perimeters, uh, containers of things. And in many ways, 
uh, we felt also during uh, the conversations we had with Go and in a way from what we knew of his work, that is something we share. Perhaps the scale of our perimeters is slightly different from the ones of, of Go, but essentially um, to try to carve out a room or to make a sequence of rooms or to make an interrelationship between a set of rooms and to negotiate exactly on the line between inside and outside, the threshold, um, has been in a way in our office and we feel also in Go's practice from the beginning uh, the key. Now, of course, if you again, you link it with uh, a couple of plans which we selected, I guess what we wanted to do was, was two things. On the one hand, we wanted to show that the way you read perimeters has a lot to do in how you frame perimeters, how you appropriate them. So there's a couple of uh, plans, in fact two by Palladio. Um, and for example, one notably uh, of the, the, yeah, the Rotonda Villa um, has this very clearly drawn rectangle around it so that almost the rectangle, the frame, and the plan itself of the Rotonda becomes a new drawing. So all of a sudden you see a, a, in a, way a house without exterior with a set of rooms on the inside. So just simply the framing, the focus on certain things makes you imagine another project. Maybe a project not unlike, say, the House of the Future of the Smithsons, where you have a house without a real outside and only a set of almost bubble-like spaces, devices, objects, which then perhaps brings us to the most extreme of our plans, which is the, the solo house. On the other end of, of the spectrum, you have uh, the uh, the, the Locomotiva project of, of Rossi, for example, uh, which is the perimeter as, a, as an urban gesture, as, as a way to contain things and let go. So plenty of projects we show here do again exactly that. But as you can see, we chose only one plan. So uh, you don't get to know when you walk and you study each of these plans, you don't exactly get to know the project. So you start to make families of projects, you start to make references, and you start to see, because we use only a limited set of scales, inner relationships. And it's exactly these relationships between the space, the room, the way you live in these spaces, and the actual architecture itself, and in a way how often the architecture almost disappears uh, in that definition of the perimeter which interests us. We refer also to the, the idea of, let's say, frame and content. And, uh, in architecture, you could say this, this abstract notion of frame and contact is, is exactly what we want to show here. Um, uh, our architecture, and also as well the one of, of Go, uh, it, it actually happens at the edge, at the perimeter. And uh, so, weirdly enough, we decided also to frame the plants. Uh, so you see a lot of frames hanging on the wall, but they again show frames containing possible content and this kind of, let's say, um, uh, depending relation of, let's say, frame and content or parameters around something is uh, for us how you can uh, work in architecture and it's an endless negotiation with this line exactly, the, the perimeter line that defines, uh, let's say, how you uh, make uh, or think uh, uh, architecture, how you think the plan and uh, by exactly bringing in references, uh, the one of uh, Rossi, the one of uh, Palladio, etc., uh, we, we understood that it's also just showing this notion that can be enough to understand it as a, a series of action that has been going on already for centuries. And uh, the, the plan as a pyramid to become something, again, very abstract, but just by making it even more abstract and not anymore a representation of, let's say, a possible building, uh, the, the plan uh, can uh, get liberated from, let's say, its uh, functional aspect and become uh, a, a parameter on itself. What was important for us is that by combining the plans of Go and the plans of ours, that despite the fact that Go's architecture uh, is of a tremendously different scale. Uh, that say, for example, very often showing the Go plans 1 to 50 and a house of ours on 1 to 100, uh, that they start to be comparable. Also, drawing plans is a lot about, uh, I would say, drawing conventions. Um, the 
plans which are drawn by the office of, of Kohasegawa very often have white outline walls. Uh, we decided on a way to, to turn them black, uh, to make them much closer in the way they're drawn to our plans. So all of a sudden, in a way, the sequence of spaces where a border is a real border uh, and an opening is a real opening, and things are in a way less ambiguous about what the performance is of the architecture, uh, we felt uh, made you read uh, these sometimes extremely sophisticated plans of Go in quite a different way. In a way, the figure becomes more readable. Um, the obstruction uh, of very often what the wall does uh, becomes far more apparent. And so, all of a sudden, you see that his uh, search for an architecture on a microscopic level very often uh, and how the sequence between the top room, the bottom room, or the equal rooms uh, with, in a way, entrances from the middle um, is so close to, to how we have been developing uh, enfilade sequences in, in different houses. So, so I was, in general, I mean, the room here for us is, is but one of these incarnations, but where you see that doing the show together, I mean, say, uh, Go Hasegawa and Office, um, implicitly dealing, say, with, with the topic of history, that rather by focusing on the tools of architecture, uh, that we started, first of all, it's very easy, because in the tools of architecture you talk the same language, and while you're talking, let's say, that same language, you start to bring in references on the table. And if you do that, then, I mean, I believe that you see very, very much uh, the parallel trajectory, but if you look more carefully, you start to see, of course, the different focus points. And uh, I think uh, both of us, and, but also the way we talked with Go, it seems also Go it's himself, we're very excited exactly that it's able to show that. I mean, the enormous uh, amount of, I would say, uh, common, um, let's say, shared uh, kind of interest, but that exactly with that, it's about framing certain things and focusing on certain things that you see the differences. First of all, to say something about this installation, we, we think in architecture, showing architecture in, in a museum, it's important to, to show space as such. And, and we decided to um, build a piece, let's say, of the Villa Shore in this room. Uh, and it shows a series of columns because the house is made by, let's say, rooms made out of columns. And uh, it's actually supporting an existing house which is on top of it. Uh, so somehow we slide it underneath the existing house, a new house. And uh, so the columns are actually structural, the beams also, and this makes rooms uh, that follow a certain structural logic of the house above, but also define a new rhythm. And uh, so you could say columns make rooms, they are made out of concrete, and suddenly we have to put glass in them. And there we switched the column into a steel column, but dressed in wood that is stained again in a, in a grain, a gray painted wood. And so there is this game of, let's say, um, uh, a wooden, and, and concrete columns, which we try to show here, but in a much more abstract way. And, and what is very important also is that it's not only about the columns and about the beams, because there's even beams in the floor, let's say, that make the threshold for each of the rooms that compose the house, but it's also about the infills. It's almost like a, a Roman villa, where uh, each floor has a different um, mosaic floor huh? and in this house uh, we made floors of different tones of, of uh, brown in leather in um, concrete and wood uh, terrazzo so they but and of course again here back let's say in montreal we 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 need to somehow make this clear but in another way and the, the challenge for us was exactly this how can you show space but without literally copying it. This room, which is a one-to-one -one, uh, representation of uh, the Shore House or the Villa Shore, um, we chose this house because we feel it was an important uh, project in a, a family of projects we've been doing uh, in that period of time. So 
many experiments, uh, let's say six, seven years ago, were about uh, the room uh, and the threshold. So also this project is in a way a sequence of rooms, uh, whereas other projects they had essentially uh, opaque walls with openings, uh, creating an enfilade-like setting. I'd say a little bit like uh, the rooms here at the CCA, uh, which together with Go we somehow appropriated by adding this, um, this uh, yellow carpet. Uh, we felt that almost as a counter uh, project uh, to this in a way appropriated room project of, 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 the, of the totality of the show, it was interesting to, to put a kind of a, a broader uh, spatial concept uh, in the middle of it. So uh, a fragment of the shore house, almost like a Roman house, uh, a set of rooms again, but made only by columns, almost like a dotted line instead of a straight line. So um, as a result, we felt it is in a way uh, an in-between step almost. Uh, it's not that our office, of course, works in, in linear uh, evolution, but it's uh, where initially all these rooms were very much about what you could and could not see. Um, in a way here, uh, we already try to reduce perimeter uh, to its absolute minimum. So a set of columns, you can walk from inside to outside. You can see uh, through almost the totality of the house in reality, and also here you can see still uh, the spatial organization of the CCA. But at the same time you see that with a minimum of intervention, uh, you define another space. So we are standing in here, since we decided not to reproduce uh, the house, which is originally on top, uh, it almost becomes like a patio. I feel that our relationship with these types is very much also about how you can revitalize, in a way, very old uh, figures, very old uh, spatial figures, um, but by changing its materiality or by changing its uh, kind of um, its rhythm, its its repetition, it somehow becomes uh, another project, in a way, a contemporary house.